When I was conducting research at the Jesuit archive in Rome for my first book, The Capital of Free Women, Race, Legitimacy, and Liberty in Colonial Mexico, I kept stumbling upon prohibitions against chocolate. I eventually wrote an article about this in the history of religions, and while writing about chocolate is amusing, the questions of cultural accommodation and religious elasticity continued to intrigue me. In 1648, Superior General Vincenzo Carafa mandated that his prohibition against chocolate should be observed at face value, as it sounds, without epicaea nor interpretation. Epicaea, the moral position that one can refuse to abide by a law for the common good, had allowed for measured religious elasticity since nearly the inception of Jesuit missionary work. From this premise, I began to formulate the idea for my second book project, Imagining Catholic Empires, Slavery, Freedom, and the Jesuits in Colonial Mexico. In a 1583 annual report, it was noted by the Jesuits in Mexico that black people had potential, demonstrated great devotion, and appeared to be notably less sinful than before. But to what extent did this approach of a cultural accommodation, how did that impact the way Jesuits engaged with black people that they said were sinful, but also capable of being less so? How did these tactics differ from places like Germany, the Philippines, or China, for example? What did mission success look like, and how did free and enslaved black people consider this developing religious landscape? My work argues that by examining the tactics and the rhetoric of the Jesuits, we may illuminate notions of Jesuit authority, colonial religiosity, as well as strategies of survival of freed and enslaved black people who became subjects of contention in this burgeoning Catholic empire. Thank you very much.